This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! I'd gone to the hospital in order to escape Rena and Mion's invitation, but the reality was that was waiting for me had been too cruel. Who was insane? Me or Hinamizawa? Or was the answer something else? I started having trouble breathing. I didn't have any clue what was happening anymore. The loud chirps of the Higurashi were irritating me. <sighs> were even the Hinamizawa Higurashi I knew so well calling into the wind? No, that wasn't quite it. They weren't calling. They were crying. The pained wailing of those lost in some kind of rhythm in another world, no longer able to return to their own sunlight. I didn't do all that to end up in a world like that. And actually, at about this time, I might have actually been having fun with everyone else. Satoko would have gotten her smile back after realizing her uncle wouldn't ever come home, and she might have shown it to us at our first club meeting in a while. <sighs> that was the kind of world I wished for. So what was this? Why did I end up in such a strange, ghastly world? Someone I'd killed was living like normal, and I had enjoyed myself at the festival despite not being there. I don't want it. I don't want this strange world! When did it start to go wrong? When?! WHEN?! No matter how much I thought about it, I never understood. I rode swiftly, and returned to my home. It had begun to rain during my journey back, and just like yesterday, I was now soaked. <sighs> but I didn't care about something so trivial right now. The pain I felt in my heart with that coach, the one person I trusted was acting so cruelly, was far worse. Did I have no allies in Hinamizawa anymore? With that naive thought, I at least wanted my parents to side with me, and I stepped up to the front door. Wait, Keiji. It'll be dark soon. There's something you want to check, right? Yes. I wanted to dig up that man's corpse to get a look at his back. If there was a tiger tattoo there, I would know beyond a doubt he was Satoko's uncle. That long night wouldn't end until I was certain. If this insane world was all reparation, all a divine punishment then I needed to make certain whether I'd been successful enough to even deserve to pay that price. You're not going to her house? Also, Coach knows where we buried the body. We told him where we buried the body. He might be there. I mean, he also might be at uh, Satoko's house, too, so... Hmm. Also, uh, Coach no is going to learn that we left and is going to call our parents and be like, Yo! Uh, your son's crazy? We need to give him a psychic evaluation. <laughs> I went to the storage room again and got the shovel. It had been washed in the rain, but the paint was peeling, making it look unsightly. I never, ever wanted to touch this thing again. The sensation of it in my hands was totally different from the night before. There was a ruthless coldness about it. Yeah, it would be dark soon, so I'd need the lantern, too. There would be a little bit of light from the street lights, but it would get extremely dark. Oh, that's right! Uisi is also probably going to be there. Oh. I thought I'd put the lantern here, but I suddenly noticed it wasn't anywhere to be found. Then it hit me like a bolt of lightning. Of course. On that night, I hadn't brought the lantern back with me! I'd left it at the place where I buried the body! If I hadn't get, didn't go back to get it soon, it would be very dark. And then not only would I be unable to find the spot I'd buried the corpse, but I wouldn't even be able to find the lantern itself. If that happened, it was all over. Also, if the police find it, I think it might have our name on it. Or at the very least, it's going to have our fingerprints on it, so... In order to fit the shovel in the basket in the front of my bike, I'd need to twist it and assemble it, disassemble it. But it looked like there was dirt in the joints, and no matter how hard I pushed, it didn't want to come apart. After a strenuous effort, I realized I couldn't get it apart. So I decided to hold it in one hand and ride my bike with the other, because that worked so well last time. With the downpour soaking me through, and a shovel in one hand, and riding one-handed... It was as if I'd returned to that night. No, return was the wrong word. It was more like that night had never ended. The pain of the raindrops striking me was no different from then. The thing that was different was Hinamizawa. The world and nothing else. The rain clouds were already making it dark, and now it was about time for the sun to set. I could tell that it would only get rapidly darker. The body being missing would be interesting, but who the heck would remove it? Either the police who would then get, see that as evidence that we committed murder. Or like, Takano? But, like, Takano was busy faking her own death. The straight road leading to town 
in the middle of it. That should be where I buried it. Yes. It was near that street light. On that night, too, the hot water from the down... The water from the downpour is splashing down from the street lights overhang like a waterfall. The, do the pouring rain was exactly the same as it had been that night, and thus it brought my memories into focus. I left my bike in the brush and stepped into the forest, the ground already soaked with mud. Rena and Mion could have removed the body, too. How would they have known exactly where I buried it, though, unless they were watching me? But I don't... With how paranoid he was, I don't think he would have failed to notice them. Where had I buried him? Think. The darkness, the shadows, the water, the mud. Everything was the same. Think. And then, I spotted the lantern by a fallen moss-covered tree. That's right. I left it right there. If I left the lantern here, then, I would have buried him over here. With the sensation of standing in the sludge, my feet remembered the spot better than my eyes did. I plunged my shovel into the ground. Ugh, it's hard. It wasn't here. I just dug it up so it should have been softer. I stick my shovel down in a few spots to test what they feel like. One of them clearly felt deeper. I recalled where the lantern was where the trees and things were in relation to each other, and knew it had to be here. Under here slept that man's corpse. There would definitely be the tattoo of Tony the Tiger on his back. Er, uh, a tiger. But if it wasn't there, then I had made a horrible mistake and killed someone completely unrelated instead. It would be I would be more dazed at the fact that Satoko's uncle wasn't dead than I would regret at having gotten someone else mixed up in this. If this insane world was punishment for the sin of committing murder... I wouldn't be able to accept it until I'd killed Satoko's uncle for good. And then, without any fear, I'd attack him again. And that time, I would kill him for sure. But what if the tattoo was there? That would mean I'd killed Satoko's uncle. But that would be terribly strange. If I'd killed him for sure, then who was the uncle at Satoko's house this very moment? Impossible. I didn't even know anymore what I was using the word impossible to refer to. I've used the word quite a few times today. If I had to make the words impossible fit just one thing, what would it be? That much was obvious to me. I shouted, then turned back behind me. There was nobody there, of course. I hadn't been bothering me for a while, but those footsteps had followed me this entire day. Even just now, an extra set of footsteps had splashed behind me. No one was actually there, no indications of anyone even. But they were there. That's right. Thinking back, the first time I heard those footsteps was after Takano-san and I had parted. Those footsteps were my welcome into this strange inside-out world. <laughs> no one could be here or there. I'd get no response. Whoever it was, they just kept staring at me. It wasn't ominous, just unpleasant. After staring into empty space for a bit... As I bathed in the rain, my illogical anger slipped away. My tension loosened, and a tired feeling reared its head. I tasted this feeling that night, too. Sudden exhaustion I felt at the tension of my brain in my brain loosened. My vision quickly narrowed, and I felt like everything around me had suddenly gotten darker. I couldn't give in to this sensation. I would light what little explosives were left in my brain and force myself to keep going. I needed to dig that man up before my stamina ran out. I needed to see that tattoo on his back. I caught my suddenly ragged breath and calmed down. Then I stuck the shovel into the soft, muddy ground again. It felt exactly the same as that night. The sense of digging a hole in the beach, with water coming into it with every wave. What today was today? Had I gone back to the night of Watanagashi? Every strange thought that came into my mind tormented me. Given my exhaustion, I didn't think I could manage to hold those thoughts back. Once the hole was deep, all illumination finally faded, blanketing my vision in jet black. It was probably the moment the sun had fully set, too. That night, I had feared the worst, and had gone without using much light. My senses were so strained that I could even see into that darkness. But now, I didn't have that kind of strength left. I drained everything I had last night, and now the darkness would be lethal. I decided to turn on the lantern. Putting it on the first setting would make it give off a faint light. Even with how little there was, it was enough, and people wouldn't be able to see it from far away in this rain. I grabbed the chilled lantern, turned the dial with a click, and set it to the weakest light setting, and turned it on. An uncanny world of silhouettes appeared before me. 
A complex and strange shadowy world, created by the intricate entanglement of trees and branches. I had only turned on a light, and it was like that was all it took to make the world into something else. I let out a quick tired breath and wiped the liquid, neither rain nor sweat from my brow. Then I raised the shovel into the air and slammed it into the mud. <laughs> that moment, the silhouettes surrounding me ominously all moved at once. <laughs> Inside my head, something packed in there, something coarse but not hot or cold, was loudly rushing about. The silhouettes were all around me, looking down at me. And one of them, a silhouette bigger than the others, stepped forward. <laughs> uh, uh, hi. Hi. <laughs> we in trouble now. The coarseness in my brain shot through my whole spine and left me at my waist. The strength in my body all left me through my hips, and I crouched down with a splash into the sea of mud I dug myself. Oh. Oh, he's so effed. <laughs> yeah, we told Coach, and he told Uisi, and they... yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Why did we dig up the body instead of going to her house and checking to see if Uncle was still there? It wasn't only Uisi, but five or six of them in a row, men wearing raincoats. I had no inkling that this many people had gotten so close. I was like, once I turned on the lantern, they just appeared there, sliding out of the shadows. You like Uishi's console sprite in this moment just because of his moving mouth? Well, we can, we can turn that to that temporarily. <laughs> he opened his mouth literally one pixel. Don't mind. Them? そうです。私たちのことは気にされず、どうぞ穴掘りを続けになってください。こんな時間にこんな土砂降りの中でそんなにも真剣にやってるんですからね。いや、邪魔なんかしませんよ。He <笑> <laughs> no, thank you, I said. When I tried to get up and turn around, two men blocked that route. Yeah, you're not getting out of this one. They stood on either side of me and lifted me up with amazing strength, then threw me into the sea of mud. As I soaked in the mud bath I dug for myself, I looked up at the silhouettes looking down at me. Luisi squatted, picked up my shovel, and threw it at my feet for me. It bounced loudly off the mud and hit me in the face. Oh, well, here... We really got a hope, Rena and Mion took the body. <laughs> I couldn't bear the oppressiveness of the silhouettes surrounding me, and slowly I stuck the shovel into the mud again. I felt like I was digging my own grave. You quite literally are. <laughs> if I kept digging, it wouldn't matter whether there was a tattoo or not, because that man's corpse would appear eventually. Ooh, it was all over. Surrounded on all sides and nowhere to go. Yep. But I just couldn't figure it out. No matter how much I thought about it. Yep. Keep digging your... <laughs> dig it up, up, oh, dig it. Why were they here? Was it Takano-san? No, it was Coach. There was only one person who could have made the connection between me and this place. You told Coach where you buried the body, didn't you? Shit. I knew it. She deserved to die! Bam! Luisi kicked me in the back, which took me by surprise, sending me flying into the mud. Oh. Luisi kicked some mud into my face. The men around him didn't react, not knowing quite whether they should laugh. But when Luisi glared at them, they started mumbling out pain chuckles. 
No, there's no way she'd tell the police of how suspicious she was last night. Just who? Who was this guy? I knew the world had changed after that night. Ugh. But if I went even farther back, didn't it start when this guy showed up? <sighs> yeah, that's true. That was when our peaceful days had been taken from us. Ever since he showed up in Hinamizawa, things had been odd. Everyone stopped smiling, and the world went crazy. <laughs> the ground under my feet gradually got harder and heavier. At this point, even I started to think something was odd. I hadn't buried him this deep on that night, had I? Someone did take the body! Dude, what? DX, you haven't played this before, have you? Because you're calling, like, every plot twist. My exhaustion peaked, and I sat down on the spot. <laughs> At Uisi's gesture, the men all pulled out their own sinister-looking shovels. As I watched a daze, one of them grabbed my collar, dragged me out of the hole, and threw me to the ground. The rest of the men stepped into the hole I dug and started shoveling themselves. As I stared at them, dumbfounded, Uisi sauntered over and squatted down to look at me directly. Maebara Keitsan. It's a new hobby I'm picking up. <laughs> when I didn't respond, Uis took one of the tin buckets they were using to bail out the muddy water, scooped up some of it, and splashed the whole thing in my face. Uisi smiled to himself, then scooped up another bucket full of muddy water. Splash! Uisi hit me with another bucket full of muddy water. The pebbles in it stun. Do you put rocks in it? Come on, dude. Anu,穴を掘ると何が出てくるんですかな。私。<laughs> the fact is, I, this is where the end of the rainbow was. I was digging for the leprechaun gold. As he spoke, the rain... Uh, he ran the bucket for the muddy water again. To splash it in my face again. Ever heard of Tony the Tiger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how was it moved so quickly? If you want to know, then dig on your own time. You fucking pig! I wasn't saying that out loud, but Uisi mercilessly drenched me in muddy water again anyway. Shit, shit, shit! If only... If only you hadn't shown up, the world wouldn't have gone wrong. Ever since you showed up, things have been strange. Sotoko got abused by her uncle, I ended up killing him, and the world went crazy. He was how it all began. Because of this culprit. He splashed another bucket of water, mud in my face. My insides were seething with anger. Die. You. You die too! If I had some strange power to kill someone by cursing them, like Takano-san, then you're dead. And it won't be Oyashiro-sama's curse, it'll be mine. I'll curse you and kill you! One of the digging men in raincoats wiped some sweat off and called Luisi over. Luisi tossed the bucket away, then turned around with an evil grin on his face. Acceptance, or maybe resignation. I wanted to say to them, So you blockheads finally found it. Yeah, that's right, I'm the one who killed him. But you're the police, so it's your own job to figure out who he is, right? Come on, prove to me that he's really Satoko's uncle. What? <sighs> <laughs> 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 
The men all exchanged glances, then hesitantly broached another topic. Well, isn't that curious? I wonder what's going on. Anyways, uh, I'd like to go home and eat some food. <laughs> this is very creepy, yeah. <laughs> Most likely possibility. Okay, we got a couple possibilities here. Most likely possibility from right now would be, like you said, probably Keiichi's friends dug up the corpse to try and help him out because they knew how. Because they knew he was good planning on doing it, and they knew he was going to be stupid and get caught. Another possibility is just Keiichi's crazy and hallucinated the whole thing, which I don't like that twist. Or... The real crazy plot twist. The real crazy plot twist. <laughs> Coach saved us. Coach had a change of heart and somehow dug up the, the body here before we got here. Or maybe Takano did. I don't know. Or Shion did. <laughs> Here we go. What? What were they talking about? <laughs> I'm telling your boss that you threw mud in my face for no reason. Luisi grabbed my collar and dragged me to the huge hole they dug. The mud inside was like an ocean, and I couldn't see any drain pipe down there. One of the men stirred it with a shovel, letting me hear it clang against something hard. There was no doubt I'd buried him right here. But I hadn't buried him this deep. I didn't dig deep enough to unearth an entire drain pipe. Mion called her Yakuza to take care of the body. Mmm, possibly. Fourth option, zombie. <laughs> that would, uh, that would be a possibility. <laughs> Fifth option, the white mage casted life. So then... This man, his corpse, where was it? Proof, proof that I'd been successful on that night, was gone. Gone! Gone! Then what- what on earth was I- Was I actually crazy after all? Or just possessed by the delusion that I'd killed someone? That couldn't be. It was the unmistakable truth. It couldn't have been a hallucination. But now, the most important evidence that it had been an illusion was gone. I killed him. I buried him. I had- Absolute unwavering confidence in that fact. Ultimate plot twist, it was Teacher. Then, did I fail to kill him? After I left here, had he started breathing again, crawled out, and got back to Satoko's house? Was that it? There's no way! I had come here to see it. <sighs> Whether he had a tattoo or not. And yet, the truth I unearthed was far more than that. I... Yesterday? What, what was I... I killed him. I buried him. There was no doubt. Is he going to be like, Police, this doesn't make sense. I killed him and buried him here. They're like, thanks for telling us. We got a confession. But for some reason, he lived and crawled back out. And that... That, that, but that was impossible, too! Oh, I'm so tired of hearing the word impossible over and over. I get it. I, I get it. Dead people don't like to play by the rules here in Hinamizawa. Then, I'll kill you as many times as I need to. I'll keep killing you until you never show your face to Satoko again. Luisi and the others were muttering to each other. Eventually, their conversation ended, and Luisi came towards me. What did he want to say? What did he want to do? I stiffened, tensed up, and then Luisi just ignored me like I wasn't even there and passed right by me. The other men, too, they ignored me and shuffled away. They're not even going to make me go to the doctor and be like, Bruh, you're clearly crazy. <laughs> wow, all right. Eventually, there was no longer a sign that anyone was around, and I returned to my quiet world of silhouettes. The only one left there was me. Only the sound of the pouring rain filled up the silence. Well, there we go. I think that's the end of Chapter 10, potentially. He could actually when they cry. Can we check on Yuri? I think he's genuinely, genuinely gonna die. That's possible. 
Yay, new tips required! Yes! Okay, so that's the end of chapter 10. Or no, that's the end of chapter 11. Gone. Turned up nothing. Well, well. Inquiry request. Let's go. Okidomiya Police Station, Command Center Transmission Recording. June 20th, 8.08 p.m. Ooh, good luck with the Pirate's Fortress. That's an interesting part. <laughs> what happened to the dead body? Gone. Reduced to atoms. <laughs> oh, ultimate positive. Thanos snapped him. It's only supposed to work on living people. No, he snapped a corpse. Number match. Shishibone H4344. Owner, redacted. Address, redacted in Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. Vehicle, make and model, redacted. Theft reports, none. Special mentions, nothing of note. Okinomiya PS yori, Oisha dozo. Sakyodo no number ga hanmei shimashita. Oisha dozo. Oisha, oto onegaimasu. Are? Denpa, warui no kana? Oisha, oto onega...出ませんね。大石さんが車両紹介誰の車だよ。村人の車ですね。至って平凡な。What's <笑> Oh, he's, oh, he's the guy who's like, you passed me. That's an insult. Great. He's running a plate check on somebody, though. Oh, he's dead anyways. Well, we don't know that. Record of malice. Ooh. He said it smelled. <laughs> he said I was stinky. He said the food smelled. He said it smelled because I smelled. He said I smelled because I don't take baths. He said to take a bath three times a day because I was a smelly person. He said I had to stay in the bath for a long time every time. He must be possessed by something, too. This is the same thing the man who died said. Why does he know what the man said before? That much is obvious. The same thing that possessed that man is now possessing him. Can't a sudden earthquake make a big hole in front of the house? If it did, he would definitely go and look into it. And then I just have to push him in. I won't give in until I get that chance. I won't give in. I won't cry. I won't give in. I won't cry. Someone is apologizing again. Uh-oh. That I think that's Satoko, and if she's hearing someone apologizing, she's going crazy too. Okay. I don't want to say I've got this all figured out. I definitely don't, but... I think, I think I'm in agreement with you, DX. Yeah. Keiji's definitely going crazy. I think Satoko's going crazy, and I think Mion and her connections help make the body disappear. I think you're absolutely right. And I think that ties up most of the loose ends.